Now, are you peeing at an angle to get that right, or how does that work? Hello, my loves. Welcome back to I Will Wander. It's a chilly-ish Sunday in my part of the world. We're not far from a town called Princeton, British Columbia. It's kind of that way, and that's where we're going to end up. Not a sound for hours. I start recording. Two planes go by at the same time, but of course. So there's a bit of the scenery in the in the area. I think that's called the Princeton Valley. I'm not 100% sure, but we're on our way there. Down this road, Alabama, looking hot. There's a car. Give me a sec. So that's kind of vaguely where we're headed, kind of there and probably stop to fish once or twice as we chat away this Sunday. A really nice spot called Chain Lake. Um, it's a provincial designated spot and there are recreation sites, there are rec sites there. Dock, a couple places to launch a little boat or a big boat, whatever you want. Um, the lake is stocked, so I'm told it's uh, pretty good for fishing. I cast a few without success, although the last couple of days I was out actually fishing, I uh, didn't record this, um, but I did catch a few on each of those days and I immediately released them because they were not uh, of adequate size to take home and fry. Um, so Princeton, this town of Princeton that we're, we're going to go check out here today. Uh, even by my standards, incredibly random, has um, a lot of uh, significance for me in some ways. Um, I worked there. I'll, I'll outline some of those details uh, when we get there, if that ends up being how things develop. I don't, I don't know how this is going to go. I don't have a clue. We're winging it, and those tend to be the best times. Um, but yeah, Princeton has... Uh, uh, some interesting facets to it. If you're working in Princeton, you're earning $38 an hour, you probably start at. Uh, front end loader, you know, rock truck type stuff. Um, those are not easy jobs, but they're not the higher paying jobs, and then it goes up higher than that. The story I have for you I was, uh, there's an Indian fusion restaurant in this little town, and ages ago when I was working in the town, I was having dinner at this place, this restaurant. Princeton. Uh, the main employer there is a uh, mine that does uh, copper, extracts copper and gold. It's been there forever. It's majority Japanese owned. So when you pull onto the property, the main, the first flag, the tallest flag is actually Japanese flag. It's uh, something I've never seen before. And the amount of money they pumped into that thing, let them fly their flag, I say. Um, so yeah, you're, you're earning if you're working in the lovely region of Princeton um, at almost anything. I was at this Indian fusion restaurant that uh, we might get a bite tonight at that place. Uh, and these two guys pulled into the gas station in front of the place and they were seemingly taunting each other with their pickup trucks with a bit of aggression. And I thought, oh, okay, I'm gonna get some, some dinner theater with my meal. And uh, the two guys ended up just parking their trucks and starting to fuel and getting out and you could I could tell by what I was seeing at the window of the restaurant that they were buddies that they were taunting each other as buddies do you pull into the gas station you have to lunge your vehicle at your buddy who's pulling in at the same time got to be done can't even believe we're talking about this um as I was leaving the guys were talking the two guys I'm describing here and they were uh one guy was talking about how there's a stream in the background the guy was talking about how he was on something like his 12th day of overtime and i think he said he was making 78 dollars an hour or something uh something mining related at the main employer the copper mountain mine which i was working for a subsidiary of driving an 18 speed peterbilt water truck sweet peat as they call them Although this girl was not very sweet, this old truck. Uh, crotch was how we'll describe this truck. A couple of the old boys wouldn't even drive her. She was so cranky and grindy, but um, I liked it. It was a challenge. It was, again, with the plane, um, basically off-roading 
in, a, in an 18 speed Peterbilt water truck with the craziest bunch of wolf. rock truck guys and engineers trying to kill you it seems like in their pickup truck because they're a little off kilter um anyway it was a wild experience in some ways and some aspects of, of that phase of things were not ideal which uh i may or may not go into um why not it's sunday and we're on a roll speaking of let's keep going and tentatively make our way to princeton but that's okay i just noticed these guys too back there sheep i'm guessing so this is on the kvr trail that goes forever the great trail uh, which is another name for the Trans-Canada Trail. goes all the way across Canada, this thing. And it goes that way as well for, I don't know, 8,000 kilometers or something. A little bit of scenery up that way. And we're going to head up here just a little bit because there's something that caught my eye and we'll chat as we do so. Mentioned how my time is devoted to screenwriting quite often. It's uh, an escape I really enjoy and a great creative expression. Couldn't stop if I wanted to. Um, there's another script now that has completed itself in my mind and is going to be the one after the one I'm working on now, uh, the one I'm working on now is uh, is essentially almost entirely female characters. And uh, give me a sec, there's a car. I often stop when there's uh, vehicle activity that way because they'll sometimes try and interfere and it becomes this annoying thing where I might as well have stopped anyway. So last script is written up uh, in its entirety, first draft. I'm in the process of typing it up and it'll certainly take a few drafts before it's done but every day some work gets done on it and i like it more and more the more i work on it uh and the next one and the next script has essentially formed in my mind as well and it wasn't what i expected this stuff kind of kind of flows through me more than anything i would say um don't want to know where it comes from or why, but uh, I just kind of go with it. So we're almost at the spot I wanted to show you. Anyway, the next script is uh, fascinating as well. I'll kind of give an, an outline of it. And here is this cute little spot that I'll turn the camera on and give you a view of. So I'll just kind of put this out there to you and get your thoughts maybe in the comments. If you lived in an incredibly beautiful part of the world and scenery for days and days and days and part of the appeal of the area was that it was like this here, much of it was untouched. A few, one sort of major urban center, and then a few minor urban centers, and otherwise there's nobody there. It's just resource extraction, like this town of Princeton we're going to go to, probably. Um, so if you lived in this area and, and spent a great deal of your time, most of your spare time, um, getting back to the nature aspect of the area, and really enjoyed and appreciated that, <clears throat> And you happened to possibly uh, be on the autistic sphere, undiagnosed to this point, but kind of had unusual observation scenarios, uh, abilities, let's say, and um, patterns particularly, but in general, and you picked up on some things 
And eventually, um, your theories, suspicions, um, proved to be true. I gotta show you Alabama there in the distance. Come on, how hot is that car? My little putt butt. So, eventually, the um, things I described to you just now autistic -y, photographic memory, patterning, deducing. Um, suspects for ages the possible existence of beyond ancient megalithic structures in uh, the area where this guy spends all his spare time. And once he starts to see this, he can't unsee it. And it is, call it autistic, whatever you want to call it, right? his uh, unusual view of the world just keeps picking up on this again and again and again in these different places. And he knows it 100% he knows what he's looking at. Uh, it's just not entirely, well, actually there's two that are, you can't argue it, but it's, it's, I'm talking about the screenplay here, right? So, um, the question I, I put to you at the Trans Canada Trail that probably spans um, where are we here? That way, and then out that way, probably a total of 10,000 kilometers, this thing, all the way across Canada. Um, so if you were living and enjoying a remote part of the world like this, and discovered with certainty uh, um, the existence of a megalithic structure, uh, would you would you publicize that fact? Would you tell anyone about that? Because you know that that section of this region is never going to be the same, or possibly even accessible ever again. Um, if if they confirm that, because it becomes an archaeological thing, and then it becomes whatever these megalithic things become. Um, so access to that area is pretty much off limits. So. You know, yeah, you, you kind of have a decision to make. Let's carry on. I'm, I'm annoying this bird here. Let's get out of its territory. To any photographers and videographers that are watching, I say welcome. Hope you're enjoying the visuals. A challenge I'm facing on this day's journey, as you will relate to, is I've got shots for days back here. Incredible, incredible photography, videography options. But... Oftentimes, it's really not wise to pull over and try and get that shot at that spot. If I'm in a more remote area uh, where there's nobody for at least five kilometers in any direction, it doesn't really matter. You know, you kind of wing it out the window, whatever, whatever. But I'm on a, a fairly busy thoroughfare here, and I don't think it'd be wise to do anything too too silly i see as you can see there i've got a lot of room where i pulled off here but there are a few spots something's miss missing its mother back there um i thought it was all i don't know if you can see that right there there's a bunch of horses and they're all kind of all in the corner there i don't know if that's like a Worst thing they do. Anyway, a lot of great shots. Uh, not as many spots to pull over and get them as I might like on this journey. Started out on my way to Chain Lake, which we were at earlier. That was the project. That was the, the journey, the wander for the day. And it's turned into something else because as many of the best wanders will do, I did what I set out to do and then realized that it, it wasn't necessarily the entire journey for, for that that phase of things and why don't we carry on and see what else we can get. And I think we're going to get some really good stuff down in Princeton over here. So this area, there's uh, Alabama there. This area, as you can see there, is incredibly beautiful and it also has a wild west history to it. This is the West. Yeah. Just like you see in those old movies with the guys with the gunslinger scenarios and wagon trains and all that. Um, 
same deal a couple of things in one shot i like that tree right there and that one this here is the outhouse now are you peeing at an angle to get that right or how does that work it's been a while since i've kept that some wild west flowers and then we've got a uh an old who knows what wrangler station I, d I don't know the terminology for the wild west stuff but uh saloon and then you've got the old school ranch entrance looking thing there whatever that is um anyway wild west always glad i go on these journeys when i decide to do so because you get these great visuals and bird sounds Another quick pan of the scenery back here. This wild west country, British Columbia, Canada, on the way to Princeton. I'll give you a unique perspective on that little town. We're just outside town here at the Princeton Fairgrounds. And some nice rock art going on here. And then we get into uh, the exhibition grounds. I'm going to try and get over to the other side there because I think there are some visuals that might be worth seeing. Um, and this is a Stan Thompson Memorial Rodeo, and uh, certainly hats off to those guys for getting on a, an angry bull. Sober. More of the Princeton Fairgrounds. Seeing that there are barn rental rates here, you can get a stall uh, for 15 bucks and a pen and stall combo. Not even sure what that is, but uh, I'm sure it serves the purpose. 110 bucks. And we've got a poker ride going on. Or the option, anyway. And then over here, uh, there's something I want to get a little closer look at. Come with. So anywhere I go, I'm very, very aware of and sensitive to not trespassing for a lot of reasons, especially in this part of the world. Um, this is a horse truck they've got going here. I'd love to watch that. Um, and I assume the drunker they get, the more diverse the animals that get ridden around this track become. Uh, from what I gather though, this is public at this point, so I'm not, uh, I'm not worried about anyone intending me grievous harm. For trespassing because what I what I understand is this is a public thing and there's nobody here and everything's wide open so um, we're not gonna worry about it a little more of the scenery back there and I'll get us up to this thing I wanted to get a shot of here this is the stuff I was talking about that I wanted to get the shots of so you've got this old standing church here original Christian BC Express Co. Caribou Stage Lines uh, saloon beside it so that was a saloon way back in the day and the store more railway and then the modern day fairgrounds of course a plane goes by when I'm trying to shoot I just resigned myself to it. Anyway, I think I'll get some good photos of this and uh, we'll carry on. Just slightly different angle of the same stuff. Sunflower Saloon. And it says plant and flower by that door. Home canning at the general store. 
and then Western Frontage. What's this one right in between here? Oh, the Western Union office way back. Oh. I've talked about how if I'm well received by a kid or a dog or whatever, uh, it's it feels like a blessing. Like I got my hair cut, I don't know when, and the dog for the hair salon came over and was insisting on some cuddles while I was waiting. And kids lately, uh, even this morning I was in Starbucks. It was a wee thing, a uh, couple. Um, all good that way. So I'm gonna go see how receptive this horse might be to a pet, if that bird would shut up. Um, I don't get the sense that they're overly receptive, but we'll see. We'll see what how this goes. Why don't we just keep rolling? And uh, there's two of them. Let's see if this guy wants to say, oh, if they cut their names out, that's neat. The horse's names are posted here. So I'm about to reveal Chick and Sunny. She knows her name. You see right here, we've got Chick. And when they don't say her name too loud, because she looks up. She thinks something's up. And then the male over here is Sunny. So I'll just go see if Sunny wants to maybe say hello. I don't know why, I don't know that, I don't think they will. No, he's not. The basic language I'm getting off him is he's not really receptive to, uh, to contact. But we'll show him. Hey, Sonny. How we doing? Hmm? Not feeling it, eh? One of those days, I tell you. You got an issue with your leg, boy? Huh? You got a sore leg? You okay? Yeah, he's grumpy. He's grumpy. Okay. Okay, bro. No worries. Just want to say hello. And Chick's eating, so we're not going to bother her. She's a little more... receptive I think but um I'm giving she's having a afternoon tea so we won't bother chick and that one's not on me he's he's uncomfortable In a sense, put out the pasture. Okay, let's carry on. Let's see what else this this day reveals. Princeton. Story of my life. Am I right? <laughs> Little stigma humor there. Um, just off the center of town in Princeton, there's the main bridge. This is two something, two something park, and you've got a river running through it that like that i'll get you a little more here there are some families enjoying a sunday afternoon in the park and i don't want to capture their image on video because they're just trying to hang out um, down by the water uh, maybe we'll get a quick glimpse of them it's not the end of the world we're pretty far away but um yeah so this is a great option if living in town you can come down here any old time and just hang out down by the river. Just do a quick shot of where it goes there. Not too long, because there's folks. And there we go. Let's get to town. This is much of the main strip of Princeton. Pretty good Indian fusion there. Um, it's not the one I was talking about previously, but uh, I'll show you a couple other spots in town. coming into town that way from the main highway I think that's five I can't remember anyway pull in Petrocan there's a spot right here called Little Creek Grill and surprisingly good food in there it's a really good spot 
still in Princeton. This place is a trip. Cafe, Chinese and Canadian cuisine, Leisure Inn licensed. The most Tarantino-esque screenplay scene I have ever written in my life is set right in that spot right there. These old cabins are right on the river that I'll show you. And as you can see, they used to rent 65 to 75. A major flood came through this area and basically took all these things out. So I don't think I'll go too close to any of them. There's not really much to see, but definite rebuild opportunities there. Tulamine River running right through town. The one kind of main bridge as well. We're gonna jaywalk across here and go check out the kid on one of those scooter things. Uh, we're gonna go check out these cabins. Not exactly the same. So here are the cabins and there was the option to rent them. But the river, you get a sense of it. I don't know if this was, I don't think this was as blocked off as it is now. But the river came up so high that it took out all these cabins. We may we may wander around for a, a closer look at, at some of these cabins, but uh, not really getting a creepy thing off it. Just uh, not sure of the point. So it's funny when you're immersed in a circumstance in a location you, I guess, identify with the place and the situation and maybe even the people uh, to an extent, which as is natural, I was doing for the period that I lived and worked in this area. It wasn't very long, but um, I don't know, maybe a few months or something. It was, it was almost like a camp scenario. They put us up in this hotel up here and then I would go home to Kelowna and come back. Um, and, uh, Being here now, I have almost, you know, zero uh, identification with the town. There's a little groundhog marmody thing there. He doesn't like my presence either. Uh, I think I've got this thing set on cinema. Let me see if I can switch that to a different focus. There we go. That's on uh, video, regular video now. And I think you can see my little, my yappy little friend doesn't like me around. Anyway, I no longer identify with this area, this town, or that job in any way. So um, I don't have any sort of emotional circumstances surrounding being here or uh, some kind of intense scenarios that this town could represent. Um, when I did work in the area and live here, on occasion I would come down here and I think just up that way a little bit, I would take my uh, boots off, roll up my pants, and um, I've never seen one of those things do that before. Even the groundhogs are tough out here. Um, so yeah, that's the spot I used to go in and uh, give my feet a rest and get a little therapeutic therapeutic um, time in the water here's more of these cabins I don't really see oh you know what screw it we'll go down we'll go down and have a look It's not people I'm concerned about, it's uh, well, I guess we'll find out. Okay, turn around, get you the, the spooky vibes. So, a visual of these old cabins that were uh, taken out by the flood. We're going to assume 
that there is uh, no asbestos concerns or anything of that nature. Um, it's kind of a neat thing though, if they uh, you know, weren't a life and death risk. Living here would have been a good spot. I don't see how you'd ever get a development permit here again, um, unless you see the, the level of this thing. They just raised the ground level here. Um, this one's kind of got a creepy vibe. Let's see if we can get you creeped out. Anything? Anything? Again, it's not uh, that people were staying attuned to its uh, carnivores. Other carnivores. Okay, so this is going to suck a little bit. There's a, uh, this is a cute one. Oh, that, that would have been the bathroom, I guess. Uh, yeah, it looks a little small to be standing. I wouldn't want to be in there when the flood came. You know what I'm saying? So we'll go back up here. Chinese restaurant here. I may live in Shenzhen, China for a while. Don't have a favorite cuisine, but I think Chinese is up there, if not the actual favorite. If there's a choice, so obviously no anti-Chinese sentiment behind the forthcoming description. So you go in when it was open when I was there before you go in and uh, there's a there was a room that looks like it could seat 200 comfortably and there's one there's a room that'll seat 200 and there's one table for four over in the corner and this little Chinese lady all dressed in yellow uh, stands up from the far corner shuffles over to you I like the blue door thing going here uh, shuffles over to you, gets to you finally, and then for how many? You tell her, uh, one, uh, she walks you all the way across the room, sits you down with these four ceiling fans going in creepy unison above, and there's nobody else. Uh, there's nobody else in the, um, the restaurant. She then goes, saunters over to the far end, five minute walk to the other end of the restaurant, sits down at her spot and proceeds to stare directly at you while you look at the menu and decide. Uh, so I went with, uh, you know, the regular three type meal you get, you can get at one of these fusion places. She does the five minute walk across the room back to me, takes the menu, uh, it opens the door to the back and just screams at the top of her lungs at the guy back there. He screams at the top of his lungs back at her uh, in Chinese. Uh, she glances over at you. A minute, and then she goes and sits down and stares directly at you. Like from, she's over here, and you're kind of looking straight ahead this way. And she stares at you the whole time. Wait for your meal. A uh, meal finally arrives. It was uh, medium quality I'm gonna say surreal restaurant experience though if you're in Princeton and craving Asian I highly recommend but that one right by the petrol can there that's high end that was really really well prepared food in there um, delightful culinary surprise to that place trust me check that spot out I'm gonna turn this off just off Main Street another spot starting with this park and then different retail cafe 
restaurant, dining options, shopping options along that way as well. It's quite nice. Beautiful spot right in the center of Princeton here. A river runs through it. And there's the town A and W. When I worked in this town, I used to go to that A and W way too often. Some of it was just to get um, their coffee and get the normalcy of going to uh, a fast food place for coffee. Sunday's cheat day, and I'm cheating. Don't normally do this, but I think the circumstance warrants it. So. I got a cousin who was a dear friend of mine, he meant the world to me, and he um, he fatally overdosed on fentanyl. Uh, did this cousin? The last time that I sat across from him and had an actual conversation with him was in that restaurant right there. We spoke of NBA stars and music and his relationship circumstances and our employment, mutual employment endeavors. He got me the job at this spot here. Um, so if the possibility of fentanyl coming into your life is a part of your lifestyle, maybe keep that in mind. It was, uh, it was right in there. I spoke to the guy last time. I got a phone call letting me know the word on that. Um, enough with the dark. There's an incredible view of a mine up there. Let's see if we can get up there in one piece. Final stretch here. I'm on the road on the way up to Copper Mountain Mine, which is that way. I think it's called Copper Mountain Mine Road. Didn't check. Um, and the reason I'm coming up here is I'm going to show you where uh, I used to work when I was in this area. Actual details of some of what it involved. Um, the, this road back here is incredibly beautiful. I don't remember it being so gorgeous. And this rock structure here caught my eye. Some cave. You see that in this area and you think, well, they were, they were, uh, they were mining for something, right? And I guess it, it came back negative. I don't know. You want to go over there, don't you? Yeah, I think I wouldn't mind either. Let me see, uh, let me see if we can get over there. And, uh. So, that's, I don't know if this will do it justice, but uh, that's a, com you know, like a complete right angle going on there. Um, not saying it's megalithic or anything, but, uh, and then you get, you got time? I got time. I got time. It's, uh, there's free range cattle here. Um, so we're going to be cautious of that. I don't think it wouldn't be an issue, but um, you don't want them to get spooked and take off and get an injury. Uh, so there's this right angled thing here. I think so. I'm going to see if there's a, a relatively easy option to get to that cave entrance. And if there is, then... Uh, we might as well go explore, um, but I don't think there is. I'd like to see that get closer up too. And the other lines are kind of oddly linear. Oh, you know what? I might be seeing a little trail path here. There's a little trail down here. Let's uh, go have a quick look and see 
what we can see. I'm so glad I wore track pants today. Why would they dig there and then here and then in behind? Very weird. Um, also, just a hunch, um, I think the owners of this property would probably rather that uh, people weren't here. So I'm going to vacate. Okay, a little further up the road. So that thing I was uh, looking around is right there. You come up this road um, and you get to the spot where we used to start our day in there with the water truck that I drove, some rock trucks and pickup trucks and um, uh, some other scenarios. I can't remember what, the, what all exactly. So, uh, not exactly enthralling yet, but you know, you start your day with the truck in there, just, just up there, we'll drive by it. And then, but the interesting part about this was that you'd go up this hill, this hill. I'm gonna give you a, a little bit of a sense of what this hill involved. And then uh, I'll give you more of a sense of it in a little while because it was, um, it was challenging. I can't show you in there because I can't get back there, but um, we can go up the hill a little bit and uh, have a look. I can show you this a little bit, I guess. So. Uh, the trucks would all be lined up here. We'd do a little meeting in there, a little powwow here. And then when it was time, we'd come up here. Or we'd head down this road over here. And that was just a mining blast. Um, go up that road there to the base of this thing that you can kind of see up there. Um, that was... Uh, that was a trip to work at the base of, as I'll show you. And now we continue up this mother of a hill. Here's more of that hill we just came up. Um, and there is this sort of wall they've built in conjunction with the mine. There's water on the other side of this wall that... Uh, that's a man-made structure, this this thing right here. Um, and I wouldn't advise swimming in the water from what I recall them saying, the ducks don't even land in that water. Um, and there is uh, sort of mining ops up there. So I used to go, I'll show you further up, but this, this hill, mother of the hill keeps going. Um, and this is in a, a large truck. I was uh, I was doing this <laughs> through this section here, um, right here, as I was driving down, up not so bad, but on the way down, I used to always keep a visual on where I was going to bail, as in jump, if there were absolutely no brake options, because uh, carrying on indefinitely would um, probably eventually turn into something unpleasant. But it didn't. Right near the top of the road that leads to Copper Mountain Mine, and I'll just show you exactly what goes on here. There is a, um, there's a campground. Uh, okay, there's some free range cattle here. I don't wanna speak them too much, so. There's a cattle guard, which they won't go past, and then you see back in the back there, there's some cattle, free range cattle. There is some of the mountain that they're literally moving here. This has been going on forever, this mine. Yeah, I don't wanna bother the cows. And, uh, yeah, neat pattern, neat color patterns to the, the refuse 
that they've discarded. I used to have to go where I'm pointing, so like directly over there, to drive the water, on occasion, drive the water truck all the way up this lunatic hill, up in through the main gate, and then up to the very, very top, far top of their operations here because they had, a, they had their own water tank and I used to fill up the truck that I was using to keep the dust down at the lower areas um, and then go down the hill that I've touched on where I would have the, the spots where I would decide whether or not I was, if I was having to jump, this is where I would do it. It was going through my mind the whole way down. There is a campsite up in this general area, guys, and maybe further up this road or I think I can point it out because I think I passed it and didn't really pay any attention on the way up. A um, couple of things and then we'll head back down. When you get into mining site operations through the gate on the other side and whatever, that's a very secure circumstance. It's the most surreal landscape I've ever encountered in my life. If ever shooting something that needed to be similar to a lunar landscape or just bizarre surreal james bond-esque or something this would probably probably be the first spot i tried to uh to secure i asked a guy who was i can't remember the name of this they churn the material this this type of material right um bigger and smaller pieces gets churned up over this large-scale kind of conveyor belt i can't remember the name of that the term for that role um, and I met a few of them when I was working here because I would be up, um, sometimes, um, getting them water, sometimes, um, doing other little minor things where I, where I would engage and interact with these guys. And I asked them, um, you know, have you ever seen anything kind of bizarre? Um, you know, I don't know, anything that sort of didn't really make much sense, uh, come up out of this material that, that was brought up from the depths of the mine and and shake and shake and shake and then and then shuffled up and over this this conveyor belt onto these smaller scale piles like this that were then moved uh down the line and uh the guy said yeah well no no I haven't. well he said there was one time i saw a skull come up and go over and he said he tried to stop the belt to get at it um but the the whole that that's not a, a a really finite process large large scale I, well i mean they move mountains right it's a huge huge operation uh and he said that by the time he was able to stop the belt from from going everything that had come up anywhere near before or after <clears throat> had buried this thing um in a ridiculous amount of material so there was no way anyone was going to find what what he had seen go over that he was under the impression was a human skull. And the guy beside him, who was an old mining lad, said, well, you know, that's not possible because it's like 150 million years ago. Uh, and he just looked at him and he said, yeah, I know that's the time frame. That's why I was so frantic to try and stop the, the machine to see what I was actually looking at there. True story. From Copper Mountain Mine, uh, just outside Princeton, British Columbia, I'd like to thank you for watching, guys. And if you haven't already, if you could just take a moment to subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. Do that quick thing if you feel like doing that. If you don't, that's understandable as well. Um, company called Hud Bay Minerals or Hud Bay Resources has, um, with the, the more modern techniques and, and skills that they have in, in locating and extracting minerals, they've realized that there are massive, massive amounts of it just up the highway. They're reopening an operation up there. So they're hiring like crazy people in this area. And there's a building boom going on in this area as well because of uh, the expanded operations. Again, they all pay crazy, crazy money up here. Um, if you're working at any of these these jobs or trades or anything up here at all, you're, you're making really good money. So something to look into i'll probably get a couple more shots but otherwise that's uh that's probably going to be it for today pretty much here's another visual of the hill i was describing uh up was fine down not so much and there's the 
a lake on the other side of this this structure that's an engineering feat uh, let me tell you and the bulldozers um, they will go straight up and down that thing it's incredible to watch I kind of wanted to try that actually but, uh, wasn't meant to be and if we have an issue not gonna happen but we're gonna bail right there and then if not well that looks like a good spot hey yay that's what the job involved another angle of it so that's where I checked out that weird cave this is where I said we pulled in where the trucks were I'm out of breath from the climb and this is more of that hill that I used to have to do a few times a day in a very old truck I was glad to do it though it was a great challenge Strutting back to the car here. Fascinating thing about mining. They're extracting things from deep within the earth, right? And there are countless examples of anomalous things being drawn up from the depths that make absolutely no sense from a time perspective it doesn't it doesn't make any sense um no one can really explain how it's possible that this thing got you know in the middle of a, a coal deposit that was formed 90 million years ago and there's no tunnel up or down or any of that it just does not make sense there's some published um paper somewhere and the guy's got something like 900 pages of factually documented cases where miners generally I, I assume it's all miners um have found anomalous items within um the material that they're extracting absolutely fascinating let's survive getting down this hill one last time and um, carry on down the road. There's some really good visuals on the road from here to Kelowna, so I'll probably get a few of those if possible. I'll see you in a bit.